everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are back at it again with a brand new WWE pay-per-view fantasy booking video. I absolutely love these videos. These are some of my favorite ones because I like to book, I like to fantasy book and kind of, you know, throw some creative aspects at the wall. Of course, this is not a prediction. I don't think that these things are going to happen. I don't really trust WWE as far as I can throw them. Like I, you know, like, you know, once in a while they'll hit, you know, they'll hit the nail on the head. Some things they do are brilliant. Some things they do are just completely illogical and garbage and sometimes they do some things that are kind of meh but you know what I mean I guess that's the nature of booking and stuff but I think it's because they micromanage everything if they would just kind of let guys do and flow and stuff and have a seat at the creative table here and there I think it would do a lot better and if they weren't a public traded company and stuff there's a lot of things that can make them a lot better some of it's out of their hands some of it is in their hands but regardless man they have a monopoly over the wrestling football industry so I mean y y what do you do but anyways guys this is again this is not a prediction this is me running through the whole full fast lane card this this is Vince McMahon handing me the keys saying, Trey, here you go, MDT, you're going to book things for this show, and I get to book things from here, on, on, you know, in a few weeks out, I guess into Mania, I guess in this case, since we have Fastlane right here. So in this Fastlane booking scenario, guys, I will be taking over booking this Fastlane card, and then proceeding into WrestleMania and all of those things. So, I try not to get too far out of the realm of possibility, but I do like to be creative and stuff like that. Now, diving in first, guys, Fastlane, should this pay-per-view happen? Hell no. I mean, we should go from straight from the Elimination Chamber, which is a garbage name for a pay-per-view. I would change that immediately to No Way Out. I'd get rid of Fast Lane. We don't need it. It should have been just that this should just be nothing. We should be getting ready for Mania, man. We shouldn't have this pay-per-view here. You could have done anything else on Raw or SmackDown or something like that, man. I don't think this show is needed. So I guess uh, for this Fast Lane bo fantasy booking video, you know, I'd just cancel the pay-per-view and that would be it. That's it. Don't cross the line. You cross the line. I've been now, what kind of effing fun would that be, Brad? That would be absolutely god-awful. So, I'm going to buckle up, get into this card. Now, I saw a tweet the other day that was like, WWE fans, they they think they can book so well. <laughs> They're terrible at booking. It would go under immediately. They'd be bankrupt in a week. I beg to effing differ, Bradley. I think I could book I could book a full year's worth of WWE, and it would be absolutely must-see television. But that's that's nonetheless. That's, that's, not even the, that's not even the problem here today. Let's just shut the hell up and dive into this car for I cut some somebody's legs off. So let's start things off with the women's tag titles, man. This is a match that should not even happen, bro. I mean, I think we're finally going to get our Sasha Banks Bianca Belair clash right here. Uh, they're gonna retain, and these two ladies will be uh, getting into a feud. I don't know what happens, Sasha. I get. I think Bianca works better as the babyface. I feel so. We're gonna have Sasha Banks walk off the apron or turn on Bianca, costing her the matchup, getting the matchup thrown out. Whatever the case is, I wouldn't have Sasha or Bianca pin here, so whatever you can do to book it that way, that's how I would book it. Nia and Shayna win, that's all I gotta say. Yeah, that, I mean, that's pretty much it, man. If it were up to me, these tag titles wouldn't even exist. Nia fell off the table. That made me happy. Moving up next, guys, we have Braun Strowman taking on Shanathan McManathan. Now, for this matchup, I low-key, like, god-awful. Don't want to see this feud, whatever, but I low-key feel like they're going to probably have match of the night at Mania. Just write it down, man. Write it down right now. They'll have the match of the night at Mania. They're going to have a weapons match at Mania, and it's going to beat the hell out of everything else on the card. It's going to be super entertaining, I bet, in the best-case scenario. Worst-case scenario, it's god-awful, and I don't even want to look at it. So, Braun Strowman versus Shaman, man, this is just a singles match at this juncture. Don't really care for this feud or anything about it, but it could make for an entertaining match. So I think this matchup, I think we get a no call or a, you know, the ref throws this match out here. Hopefully that won't be back-to-back -back matches thrown out. I don't know really how. I guess Nia and Shayna can get DQ'd or something, or one of these guys could get to, I don't know. We just need, or maybe Braun Strowman pins him, or maybe Shane McMahon wins dirty. One of them wins dirty, and it leads to weapons and stuff like that, and it turns into a blood feud, which leads to a huge weapons match at WrestleMania. That is what I would have here, and I would absolutely absolutely have Braun Strowman ultimately winning this feud. Maybe he loses here and then wins at Mania because he doesn't need a, a, a superstar talent like Braun Strowman or what used to be a superstar talent. Doesn't need to be getting beat by Shane McMahon in 2028. So let's just go ahead and have uh, Braun Strowman win over Shane McMahon and that'll be a doozy. Next up guys, we have a football game that should be pretty damn good. We got Intercontinental Champion Big If E, Big If E, taking on everyone's favorite, Apollo Crews. So Apollo Crews and Big E, this should be, a, I bet this is going to be a really fun match, man. I think this is going to be probably one of the best matches of the 
night. So you guys know that Apollo Crews, he's turned heel here, and I think that they want to keep that momentum going. I, I think it would do him a big disjustice or unjustice or injustice. Apollo would be hurt greatly here if he did not win this matchup. So I'm going to go Apollo as your new Intercontinental Champion. I'd like to see one more wrestler get involved in this match going into Mania, like a KO or something like that would be beautiful in this feud. So maybe KO comes out after the matchup, beats the hell out of Apollo Crews. I would love to see a triple threat right here with KO or something like that. I don't even remember the last time I saw KO on television, to be honest with you. But there you go. Apollo becomes champion. KO gets involved. There's your triple threat going into Mania. Next up, guys, we have Alexa Bliss taking on the Viper. We got Randy Orton in the house. Now, this is interesting. An intergender match. Now, I think that these guys have kind of lost a bit of their jello in this feud. I feel like, you know, it's kind of fell off a little bit. Without the Fiend being on television, I feel like it's helped the Fiend, but it's hurt the feud. Help the Fiend, hurt the feud. Help heal the Fiend and hurt the feud? You get what I mean? You understand what I'm saying? You smelling what I'm stepping in there, Bradley? That could be a little thing there. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Let's move on. Randy Orton and Alexa Bliss intergender match. I think this could be really, really fun. Now, we did already see an RKO to Alexa Bliss. So, the fact that that's already happened makes me think that, you know, like, there's not going to be much to this match. Like, I would say that would have been a beautiful thing to see on this pay-per-view and show. I think that would have been a beautiful way to, like, showcase this feud and really take this feud to the next level. But since that's already taken place, I think that maybe we get some action between the two. Maybe Alexa Bliss can show off her freakish powers by, like, being stronger than Randy Orton in certain aspects. You know, she's being powered by the Fiend, and you could really tell that story really greatly. Like, holy shit, like, and Randy be, like, scared. Like, oh my god, how is this woman equal to my man's strength? How is this even possible? You could do some really cool and creative things like that. So I would have that play up. Maybe Randy, like, punt kicks Alexa, and Alexa's laying there lifeless. And it's like, ah, and he, you know, he starts doing the pound in the mat thing. Lights go out, nothing's there, but the Fiend is behind Randy Orton with an axe and goes right into the spinal cord. <laughs> Obviously, I'm joking, but the Fiend is there and he takes out Randy Orton, setting up their Mania match in a Buried Alive match at WrestleMania. Alexa Bliss would end up winning the matchup. Maybe he, a Fiend could like drag her over the lifeless corpse of Orton, or maybe the Fiend could just pin Randy Orton because that's the WWE illogical booking, but I'm booking the damn show, so I wouldn't do it that way. I'd have Alexa Bliss win the matchup and uh, Buried Alive match, Fiend versus is Randy Orton. I think that'd be cool, but I, I say buried a live match, but I mean Jesus Christ, the Fiend got set ablaze, so I mean, how else do you kill him, you know? Like, what's burying him alive gonna do, you know? Maybe you could do the cement treatment like Undertaker? I don't know. There's a lot of cool things you could do there, but Randy Orton will lose to Alexa Bliss. Next up, guys, we have our Universal Champion Roman Reigns going one-on-one -on -one with Daniel Bryan. Now, first of all, this matchup's gonna be fantastic. I would love to see it. Now, either Edge or Jey Uso will be special guest enforcer for this matchup, so so Edge and Jey Uso will be battling it out on SmackDown to see who will be the special guest enforcer. Now, I don't think Jey Uso can win this matchup. I think Edge has to, right? I mean, he's your main event star. He's going into Mania. He won the Rumble. He's got this big time matchup. This man can't take a pinfall going into this show. Edge is going to beat Jey Uso. He will be special guest enforcer. And this is where you have your... We're going to have a triple threat, bro. We're going to have a triple threat at Mania. Uh, Edge and Daniel Bryan will get into it in this matchup. You can do really creative like ref you know versus talent spots where edge is you know he's getting in the way and he you know the, i feel like there's going to be some screwy finish that is going to end up i would have it where there's a screwy finish where it's like a you know it's an iffy pin it's like was it really a pin was his shoulder actually down and edge is going to cost daniel bryan the matchup by pinfall setting up a triple threat at wrestlemania there's your uh, triple threat daniel bryan versus edge versus roman at wrestlemania that should be a fantastic one but all you got to do is maybe have daniel bryan's shoulder up up or not up, you know, make it kind of iffy, make it very questionable when Edge calls it. Now, special guest enforcer doesn't really mean special guest referee, so I guess they'll just be out there to enforce the rules of the matchup, which is kind of weird, so I get, I, I don't really know what's gonna happen, but they're gonna get into it. All three of these guys are gonna get into it, leading to a triple threat, and that's how I book it. So there's your triple threat main event. And last but not least, I know you're probably like, why in the blue hell is this a main event? Well, I'll show you why the hell it's the main event, Brad. We got Sheamus and Drew McIntyre, a little blood feud action going on right here. A lot of people want a triple threat for the 
WWE Championship. And I don't know, you might get that, but that's going to mean that there's like five triple threats booked in this damn video, which I don't really like, but sometimes you just got to bite the bullet on it. So WWE Champion Bobby Trashley out here. I actually like Bobby Lashley. You know, I call him Bobby Trashley because it fits and he can't cut a promo and whatever, but I've always loved him in the ring, actually. Back in like, dude, like when he first showed up, I was like, I love, I used to run season mode like day and night with this guy every time I played WWE Raw vs. SmackDown 2006 and 7. Now there's two ways you could book this. I'm going to give you two different scenarios right here. Now the first one could just be number one contenders match for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania on the line between Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. I'd have Drew McIntyre go over and you would have Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania. There's option number one. Very cut and dry. Nothing too crazy with it. That could be your one. The other option would be number one contenders match. Both guys are beating the hell out of each other. They have a really good showing and then out of nowhere the Beast Incarnate shows up, F5s both of them, leading to a triple threat number one contenders match on Monday Night Raw, in which the Beast would win. Drew McIntyre and Sheamus would take each other out. You would have Sheamus and Drew McIntyre in a one-on-one -on -one blood feud at WrestleMania, like we've been building uh, for a long, long time now. And then here's your WWE Championship match at WrestleMania. You get your dream matchup that we've been waiting for forever, the match that Lashley wants, the match that everybody has been wanting to see. Bobby Lash versus Brock for the WWE title, and there you go, and I don't know who I'd have win. I honestly want to see Bobby Lashley win, but I kind of low-key miss Brock Lesnar and want him to just pound him into the floor. Nonetheless, this matchup would be very enjoyable, and I'm just going to go with, uh, you know, setting this matchup there. So you guys can give me your uh, your favorite take. Would you rather see a triple threat between these three or two separate one-on-ones? I think I'd rather have this option with Brock Lesnar becoming number one contender on Monday Night Raw, winning a triple threat number one contenders match with these two guys, setting up these two on their own and these two on their own. And that is me, Fantasy Booking WWE Fastlane 2021. Pretty fun fantasy book, man. I love fantasy booking. It's so freaking fun. Let's get into our random shout out before we get the hell out of here, man. Now this huge shout out is gonna go to so this huge shout out is gonna go to James Hardwick who says keep the rage rolling. MDT has me in bits every time for the love of God, Brad. And good God, if you guys missed Action Figure Appointment, which I know a lot of you did, definitely go check it out because I was raging my ass off, man. I was losing my John Brown mind to be honest with you. I mean, I just couldn't get it get it done. I wanted to. I just couldn't. Couldn't do it. Time. I mean, I just couldn't get the ball in the hole. I wanted to, but I just couldn't do it. Now let me know what you thought of my fantasy booking plans for WWE Fastlane, man. I'd really, really appreciate it. I always enjoy these, and I really kind of do them off the cuff. I kind of just think about it for a half second, and then just my mind goes into Zach Galifianakis on Hangover, and I just freaking analyze the situation, and we hit it. But thank you guys for watching. Shout out to James for the shout out, and uh, shout out to James for the shout out. He didn't shout me out. James, did you cross the line without even meaning to, Brad? Just like the rest of the audience? You cross the line. I've been